Hi everybody, how's it going today? Thanks for watching another video. If you uh, were watching here a couple of weeks ago, or a week ago maybe, talked about uh, breaking out the concrete in our manure building. Been uh, working at that here today a little bit. We've uh, got some of the concrete broken out and uh, we're gonna get this uh, conveyor that we're renting situated. We're gonna run it and make sure that uh, it works when we need it to work. We're gonna pull it out because we've been watching temperatures a little bit here and we're supposed to get down into the teens for the next few days. And then after that, we're back into lows in the mid twenties. So I think at this point it makes sense to wait for that. Hopefully uh, the weatherman is correct here for once. We got a little bit warmer temps when we uh, start working on, so that, because when we start working on this, we're gonna have that door open with the conveyor running out. I'll kind of show you guys what, what I'm talking about here. We've uh, broken the concrete out here on this side, also on the other side of the conveyor. Right now we're setting this conveyor up and once we uh, do start to run this thing, we're only gonna use one of our separators and uh, we should be able to do that temporarily because we'll be running on rainwater. And uh, with rainwater, we're able to keep, keep up versus uh, separ separating our manure stalls and using that liquid. We just use a lot of that rainwater so we've got this conveyor, it's gonna dump outside here. And as you can see, we're not gonna be able to close the door. It is snowing here today. So another reason why I don't really wanna work on this the next couple days, it's gonna snow here. It's gonna snow here the next uh, day or so. It's Thursday today. It's gonna snow until uh, mid Friday morning or so it looks like. But we're gonna run it here, make sure this works. We'll run it this afternoon. We, uh, this, this conveyor's got a, a uh, what is it, a 20? Got a 20 horse motor on it. We're gonna hook it up to uh, our spare piston pump VFD, which uh, has a 10 horsepower. The VFD is set up for 15 horse, so a little light there, but we're not gonna have to run this thing full speed and there's hardly any, any sand falling on it. So I'd, electrician Chris thinks uh, it should work. So that's what we're gonna find out here today. He's just uh, getting some wires hooked up here. It did, did have a plug-in on it, so that part's fairly easy. We just have to run a wire from a junction box where the power is going for that uh, piston pump. We're gonna tie into that and then plug it in and find out if this works. So we're temporarily going to uh, store our sand here where normally our manure solids are falling out of. So we won't be separating manure solids either here the next uh, couple weeks. Sand will fall. We're just on the edge of the concrete there, so we're we're uh, so some of that sand's gonna fall on the on the non-concrete driveway, but that's that's okay. So this is the other area that we're gonna be redoing here. As you can see, we've torn all this concrete out. All we have left is the center essentially, and then underneath the separators. So the plan was to start working on this this weekend, get all this concrete out get it ready to pour for Tuesday or Wednesday next week but with the uh, temperatures being as cold as they are forecasted and with it warming up after that I think at this point it makes sense just to wait for a little bit warmer temps I mean it's not gonna get any warmer anymore but I'd rather be working in 24 degrees than 10 degrees and with this door being open like this all the time this uh, we got water in here, manure in here. I don't want to freeze, freeze things up in here. So I think at this point, that's the best uh, way to go. We just tried it here. Of course, was running the wrong way. So we flipped the wires around, run the right way, but it's not running very smooth. So we're greasing up all the, all the rollers here. It's probably, wouldn't be surprised if this thing has not been used in the last five years, just been sitting. So needs a little extra love here to get it going. Once we get all the rollers uh, lubed up here, then we're gonna fire it up again. I didn't think about turning it on here with Chris up there to see if, uh, if we get his attention, but I think we better not do that so we don't lose any fingers. We're gonna start the separator up here in a little bit and uh, make sure it all runs with a little bit of load on there. Not gonna be much of a load, but we'll uh, 
fired up here in a second. a few days later here just uh, went to our south freestyle barn just right next to the sand separator building where we were working Ian's with me here it's Saturday as you can see we started working on the floor again so it was uh, ended up being a good decision to wait here because the weather forecast has changed pretty drastically we went from uh, not seeing any temperatures above freezing to now they're uh, forecasting some 40s again here the next uh, four or five days or so there's actually a chance for a little rain here tomorrow so we're uh, gonna try to get that floor torn out here today and tomorrow get it prepped the plan is to pour uh, half of it Tuesday morning the other half uh, Tuesday afternoon or Wednesday morning we'll see how Tuesday goes before we make that decision but it's uh, nice today just above freezing Good, uh, good time to uh, work on this now. I thought I'd come into this uh, freestyle barn here. I always get a lot of questions about our sand bedding, why we use sand bedding, uh, how the separation system works, how much sand we recover. So I thought I would uh, end this video, kind of show you guys that. We'll let, we'll let Ian here play in the feed for a few minutes and I'll walk into the pen here and uh, show you guys how it looks in the pen. Are you gonna stay here, Ian? I'll be right back. I'm just gonna go right in there, okay? okay. By the cows. Yeah, You're giving them food? Yeah. Okay. So this pen that I'm in here, these are uh, all third lactation plus the older cows, high production cows. So the essentially the way the bedding works, or the way the way the sand bedding works, it's deep bedded sand. So there's about six to eight inches of sand. We'll walk down a little bit here, see if there's an, an empty stall. About six to eight inches of sand in these stalls, so as you can see, their their hooves dig right into the sand here. Very comfortable for the cows. It's uh, easy for them to get up and and lay down. They don't have to worry about injuring themselves. And sand also doesn't hold bacteria like other types of bedding would, so it's uh, really good for uh, utter health for uh, mastitis, uh, keeping mastitis under control. And the reason why we separate the sand, sand is, uh, it's still uh, still a pain in the butt to deal with, but in your manure system, uh, if you uh, pump it out to your manure storage, then it's uh, a big, big pain in the butt to deal with also. We're separating the sand, like I said, and we're recovering about uh, 98, 99% of the sand. We Made a lot of changes uh, to our sand separation building over the last 14 years. Had a lot of issues in the beginning with uh, plugging up our manure lines to our manure storage with sand. But that hasn't been uh, really an issue here the last five, six years. We've kind of got things under control now, or at least uh, I think we do. But uh, yeah, like I said before, I think sand bedding, it's uh, for the cows. I think it's... Uh, one of the best bedding options. I mean, there's there's a, a give and take with any any kind of bedding system, mattresses, uh, deep bedded manure solids. There's positives and negatives to each system. The negative to sand bedding is it can be uh, difficult to deal with, and it's uh, it is quite expensive. All that equipment we're running in that building, it's uh, all running probably uh, 20 hours a day, separating sand from uh, the manure. And that's, uh, yeah, like I said, running all the time. All that stuff needs maintenance. All that stuff needs to be looked at. Somebody's uh, looking at that equipment about every uh, 30, 45 minutes just to keep an eye on things. Because it, it can be a little bit touchy. Always adjusting the speed of the manure feeding into the separators. But we feel, or I feel, that for the cows, it's uh, the best option. I'd rather... Uh, 
I'd rather deal with uh, problems with the manure system than problems with the cows. So that's why why we we have sand and why we've always continued with sand even when we've had. Um, I remember originally when we started here 14 years ago. We we had we started with sand right from the beginning, but those first few years they were they were very difficult, especially the winter times. That as the manure and sand gets colder, it becomes more difficult to separate. Uh, if you don't have your system set up good, it can be an absolute nightmare. I remember spending. Uh, I remember there were times where somebody was in that building pretty much every minute of every day to try to keep it going, and then we plug manure lines because we weren't separating the sand as good as we should and it was just just a, a pain in the butt but I'm glad we stuck with it because the, the results in uh, our milk quality, utter health and it also helps with traction on the manure alley so we we don't have issues with cows uh, slipping on the alleys and they're comfortable uh, showing good heats which helps our repro also so it's a lot of benefits uh, just uh, extra management on the side of uh, the on the manure side of things, but worked out so far. Actually, like I've mentioned before in videos past, or if you just started watching, our uh, heifers, our free, our heifers that are on free cells, they're on separated manure solids, and I'd like to at some point convert that barn over to sand as well. Just uh, don't have a lot of maintenance with it in the stalls. We bed once every ten days. We uh, really don't rake we rake immediately after bedding that's the only time we're raking the sand the beds kind of level themselves just from the cows getting up and laying down because it doesn't get compacted in the stalls so it's um on, on that side of things just been really nice to work with sand but like i said sometimes it can be a little bit of a, a pain in the butt for us to deal with but we uh we make it work i uh, i think i'm gonna end this video here i'll probably film some of uh Probably film some of us pouring that concrete, laying in the floor or heat uh, in the next video or maybe the video after that. We'll see how things go here. So, plan is get the floor all prepped tomorrow. Monday morning, the plumber's coming to put pipe down for floor heat. And then Tuesday, we're gonna pour the first section. We originally thought about pouring it all, all at once, but kind of talked it over, I think, to make sure we do a good job, get the slopes right. We're going to do it in two sections and to uh, be able to get uh, get concrete into everywhere in that building without needing some kind of a pump truck or something. We're going to try to do it in two times and uh, keep that seam away from where we're, where water is going to be running or manure is running and also away from the areas where we're turning. So I think we'll, uh, we'll end this video here. Appreciate you guys watching. If you have questions, comments, post them down below. And uh, hopefully we'll see you in the next video. Do you have any, uh, anything to say, Ian? You want to say bye? Bye!